In this lecture, I'm gonna show you how to go into Google Ads and pull up some location reports because if you want to now make bid adjustments and make your spend more efficient across different geographical locations, you need to know how to assess how different locations are performing, whether you should increase bids, decrease bids, potentially totally exclude certain locations. And there's a lot of things to think about. So here we are back in a live Google Ads dashboard of a client that has generated uh, 28, 33, rather $33 million in conversion value over the last few months. And we wanna see, let's say, how some different locations are performing. So from the campaigns tab, you could be under search campaigns in the primary in the primary vertical navigation on the left, you could be under search campaigns, display campaigns, or shopping campaigns, and you could analyze your geographic results at any of those levels um, in the menu. But I'm just looking at all campaigns here for, for starters to get a broad overview, overview um, of the entire account, and that's what I will typically do if I'm auditing an account. So we're gonna go over to locations here. It's under settings in the in the secondary vertical menu. I don't know if that's what it's called, but that's what I call it. And we're going to click on locations. This pulls up a basic locations report. Now I could sort these columns by clicks, by cost, by impressions. Um, and I'm seeing all these different states that have been getting, um, has been getting activity. So I'm seeing California, um, and, and it's breaking it down by campaign here. So I, I'm seeing California twice because there's a shopping campaign um, and a different shopping campaign that is both getting a lot of activity in California. So we could see here that California is getting the most amount of traffic, right? Now, most amount of traffic is not necessarily the key indicator of success of a campaign. It typically isn't. Usually it's, it's conversion rate or it's it's profit, it's it's return on ad spend. There's, you know, and it sort of depends on what your specific business goal at the time is. So I could say, okay, California is doing really well. It has a 7.9% conversion rate um, for this campaign. And I might wanna make a bid adjustment, right? So if I say 7.9% is a little bit below the, the overall average of the account, right? But it's still performing at um, a conversion value divided by cost that I that I like, which and conversion value divided by cost is your return on ad spend. We'll talk about that again in the future. But if I say I wanna, I wanna bid more aggressively, then I'm bidding in that campaign. So in that campaign, I have bids for every single product. Now I wanna do something on top of that. I wanna say, where if, if I have this AMG shopping bid LP stands for low priority, if that campaign has a product in it or a product group or an ad group that has a $3 bid, I wanna make a bid adjustment um, of 20%, let's say, and so I'll be bidding an extra 60 cents um, on that bid. So I'll be bidding a maximum of $3.60. I wanna be more aggressive in that location. I could simply click edit and increase my bid by 30%, right? So it tells, it tells me a $10 bid becomes a $13 bid. We're looking here at a targeted location report. If I go to excluded at the top, I'm gonna to see a list of all the locations that we've excluded. And you notice that there's no area for bid adjustment over here because these are totally excluded locations. If I go to geographic report, we can start seeing some really cool stuff. So first I'm gonna click on geographic report and I see a bunch of uh, states and it looks very similar to my original targeted report. This is where you really wanna come and start drilling down to see specific data. Right now I'm looking at the region level, all countries region. So we're looking at a region report now, but I can go back and click on this drop down menu and select any of these other dimensions. So I could go down to look at uh, neighborhood, uh, borough, if it's close to an airport, municipality, county, congressional district, right? There's all sorts of really interesting things that I could look at. I could also just click on all countries above, and now I'm looking at a much higher level of all countries. So you can see in this campaign, almost all of the traffic is coming from the United States, right? You might be wondering why you're seeing two separate location items for the United States. Well, one is called location of interest, one is physical location. And it's very simple what those two things mean. Physical location means that the user was actually in that location, whatever location is here on the left, when the ad was triggered. So when they clicked and got that, when the impression happened and the click happened, they were physically in the United States. And of course we see um, far more um, impressions and clicks for people who are in the United States. Location of interest means it could be somebody from out of the US was expressing interest in furniture stores in the US or online sofas in the US. Somehow they, they, they added that to their search term. They might've used a, a, the name of a state or the name of a city when they were searching and Google determined that we wanted to show them an ad based on the fact that they're expressing interest in our targeted location. And in the next lecture, I'm gonna show you how to, to modify those rules, how Google treats that. But you see here a, a minuscule percentage of traffic coming from location of interests. 
If I want to now drill further back into, let's say, go back to region, because that's really where it's going to be helpful for me in this account to start making decisions based on location data, I'm simply going to click United States and select region or state. So let's say I go ahead and click state. And now I'll be back in um, the state view that we were looking at previously. Actually, we were looking at region, but it's, it's similar. Where is my conversion rate the highest? Okay. Now I'm going to sort by conversion rate and I'm probably going to see some anomalies, right? And we have to talk about anomalies. So exactly, here's a beautiful example of, a, of an anomaly. Vermont has a 253% conversion rate, um, which obviously doesn't make much sense how you could have above 100% conversion rate. There are reasons why that could happen. Google could back count certain, certain conversions if the same person converted twice through one click. So I'll see three clicks, but um, potentially seven conversions, depending on how you set up your counting of a conversion in Google Ads, um, but it's an anomaly, so we can't assume that you know most. Uh, and and it's such it's such low volume that making optimizations for Vermont doesn't really help me much. As we move down into Mississippi, Mississippi has a 37% conversion rate. Um, again, very low amount of conversions, very low amount of clicks to really know. Um, but I'm seeing California has a. Um, 20% conversion rate, and this is really significant. This is actual real data. So now I'll know, okay, I want to start doing some things in California to make to see if I can capture more of that market share. Uh, so I might now return back into my targeted tab, find California, um, and I could and I could filter by all campaigns that have California in it. Remember that this is a campaign overview report. So if I just increase my bid in California here, I might not, but I'm not going to be increasing my bid in all campaigns that are targeting California because I have a bunch of different campaigns in this account. So it might look different for you. So you can't actually filter from this report all targeted locations that include California, but this is a pretty simple workaround. I want to first make sure I have all of my locations showing up on this page. So I'm going to scroll to the bottom and I see that I have 100 out of 243. So I'm going to click to show 500 rows. And then I'm going to do a simple command find or control find on Windows and type in California and I'll have highlighted all of the targeted locations that have California. So I'm just going to select, select, I could go down up here, select it again and select two more and I think we got them all. Is there one more? Looks like we got them all. Okay. So now all I need to do is edit, change bid adjustments and say I'm going to increase my bid. 15%. Now, of course, I know that 15% makes sense for us in this case because I know what our max CPC bids are for California already. So I'm able to say that bid plus 15% will still keep me in the range of profitability because I know that I have an above average conversion rate for that targeted location. And that sort of formula applies in, in any area you're making a bid adjustment. If we're making a bid adjustment for gender, for men versus male, male versus female or anything else, you want to use these formulas based on what your max CPC bid is, what your conversion rate is, and what your um, profit is for that location or for that demographic or for that whatever that dimension is that you're increasing or decreasing the bids on. And again, use these different drop down menus to go even further into your data. So if I go into city, let's just take a look at what that might, might look like in the report. And then we'll wrap up because I don't need to go through every single one. Like I said, every single one of your campaigns is going to be different. How you're targeting your campaigns are going to be different. If, you're, if your campaigns are only being targeted to a specific state or to a specific location or a radius targeting, then you're going to want to always look at, let's say, postal codes within that or neighborhoods within that, right? Um, so over here, I'm looking at cities. And of course, if I sort by clicks, we're going to have a lot more data to go through. And you could download this, these reports and, and play with them in Excel as well. Um, any report you see in Google Ads is downloadable. Um, if I scroll to the bottom here real fast, I'll see that I have 24,364 locations. That's quite a bit of information to, to run through. And for an account like this that's spending this amount of money, it doesn't make any sense for me to be wasting time analyzing by city level. That's another thing that you have to remember as you're optimizing these campaigns in the age of the amount of data that we have is that it's very, very easy to get overwhelmed by data that's irrelevant. So will I maybe find some interesting trend in a specific city? Yeah, but and that and like if you're if you're getting your account you know, if you're pitching your account to an agency or, or somebody's telling you that they can make your account better because they say, oh look, um, in Dallas it's a half a percent better conversion rate. We should, yeah, but it's not practical to, to optimize a campaign that way. You're going to get bogged down in minutia and you're not going to have time to do the things that are much more important. It's much, much more important to be spending your time optimizing 
across a range of dimensions in a Google Ads account. You need new keywords, negative keywords. You need to be changing your bids. You need to be A-B testing your ad copy. You need to be working on quality score. You need to be doing um, uh, affinity audiences and remarketing audiences. There's a, a lot to do. So when it comes to location optimizations, look at the highest level that you think makes sense. So for an account like this, it would be at the state level. For most accounts servicing the country, it would be a state level. If you're looking with, if you're only targeting within a, a small location or a radius targeting, then of course drill down the next level below. So I always recommend going the next reasonable level below and taking a look at your data. Next lecture, we're going to talk about the advanced location targeting settings um, for exclusions and targeting. It's worthwhile to really understand that because they can make a big impact on where your ads actually show up and who sees them. So on that note, I do look very much forward to seeing you guys soon in the very next lecture.